Alright, good day folks. This is what I got going on here when I was talking about how it's much more efficient at high frequency, the reactive power, and how you can enhance it and use the one wire system to feed your LC circuits with very, very minimal loss and actually take advantage of the amplification. So this is what I got going now is I found the sweet spot on the Variac with the help of a uh, LC meter and with my capacitors there. Um, in series with the um, winding of the uh, Variac. Um, this basically hard sets the possible current of real power to around 40 MA. And I've measured it a lot and it doesn't really peak more than that. And it's the inverter feeding the um, Variac and the Variac is tuned and we're using displacement current here to feed this transformer which feeds my um, high frequency oscillator here. This is one wire. So what I'm doing is I'm feeding a coax. I made a big coax loop here. And um, what's happening is this coax has uh, 170 UH inductance. And I'm taking advantage right now of the outer shield. And there's an exact one-to-one -one built in loop because of the coax here. So that fully isolates the input and allows me to measure it basically. And at high frequency, at high one wire, it energizes this primary like coil wirelessly couples into the Tesla coil here. And the Tesla coil from here, you know, it, it's wirelessly coupled. It's not at all connected but it, this primary here still energizes the Tesla coil and the Tesla coil gives us a much amplified output through resonance without stressing the additional input load. So what happens is I've got my, um, so this here is connected, this blue wire is connected to the ground of my oscillator, okay? And the one wire high voltage side connects through this wire here and it connects to the shield of the coax and the other side is left open. It's an open loop one wire system. At high frequency this is the best way to take advantage of the system. So along with the reactive current we're recycling a good part of our power. We're limiting the input to around 40 milliamps and I'm going to turn the inverter on now. So as you see it doesn't even run the fan or anything. It's very very low input. So what I'm going to do is, here's my lamp, and um, I'm going to have to find a way to hold this. So I'm going to try and put my stand over here and show you what's going to happen. Uh, so maybe if I tape, because what happens is I need to use my two hands. So just a moment, I'll, I'll um, fix something up real quick here. All right, it's a quick fix. I got the ground on there, so I'm going to turn on. So what you're going to get, there's a lot of high frequency, so it's partially going to turn on, but not very brightly. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to touch the center very slowly here towards the center pin here. So remember this is not directly connected and you'll see this is basically the input what we're putting into one wire. So when I touch it here see there's a bright, it's hard to settle it with my hand here. Ouch! And <laughs> a lot of power here. I'm shaking a lot okay there we go so this is like this this is like medium power this is our input through the inductive coupling though the inner loop but it's not connected at all so what happens is um, when I go towards the test dot coil here there's a major amplification uh, if I turn it on for more than a few seconds it gets hot and I smell it burning which means there's more than this is a 5 watt lamp so there's like around 10 watts coming in it wants to burn the lamp so when I touch it here hold on this is a lot of the brightest it's it gets but I can't keep it on because I smell it burning here 
it gets too bright and it doesn't stress the load at all but it's the amplification and there's a lot here because as you can see the spark there hold on it's all very hard with one hand without zapping myself either there's a lot of recycled power here so now see we're establishing the gap hold on oh that I can smell that toasting no I can't have to stop but see how much of an amplification there is there like over 10 watts at once to that this is a 110 volt lamp here and this is happening all through one wire the one wire this is just the efficient way of doing this because at one wire the loop remains open there's no return path and whatever you get extra here is all yours as long as you keep that input minimal and we're doing that thanks to the reactive stage over here and as you see I almost um, was joking but killed myself here it was a pretty nasty shock but it, it this is the I probably won't edit it just to show people you know this stuff could really um, <laughs> when you're not expecting it you got to be careful even when you got zero input trigger that reactive current accumulates and if you could recycle that and run high voltage generators and whatnot and true resonance here you're going to get a lot of output and potentially dangerous too i mean uh, from what i felt it felt more than 10 watts and if this is smoke in my um, lamp here there's a lot it's maybe even 20 watts so not bad for 40 ma input and this is burning out my my lamp here so um i'll try another quick demonstration that's bright it's hard to get it stable yeah so that's that and of course it's about you know this will charge really really big cap dumps and you can take advantage of the amplified um, outputs and dump that to charging batteries or whatever you want to do with it so again there, there's no tricks here this is a ground wire that's actually completely disconnected this is USB cables this is from a camera stand over here these are AC, this is for my camera, this is disconnected, this is for my scope, it's disconnected. So there's nothing here, it's exactly all of this here, very efficient, the inverter isn't even hot, because we're limiting it through the reactive stage here and I fine tuned it. So we're really doing a good job at internally recycling the input trigger as little as it is and getting something really, you know, pretty strong in the output here. So hope you enjoy. Just giving you a little bit of a progress report. This is unique. It's a one wire driven high frequency Tesla coil where the its primary is wirelessly driven. So there you have it, folks.